Gloria Steinem's name has been identified in the women's movement for more than 20 years. Her new book, Revolution from Within, explores the individual roots of political change, and it's a pleasure to have her here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, tell me about why you wrote this, first of all, because a lot of us might have expected you to write the book that Susan Faludi wrote, uh, Backlash, uh, looking at, at feminism and where it was going and what some of the, some of the things, the turbulence that it had run into and why the people who were criticizing maybe didn't understand and how the message wasn't getting across, all those things, which I know are part of what you think about and concern yourself, but instead you, you turned inward here. Why? Well, uh, it's very much of a piece with Susan Faludi's book yeah. because what it's trying to say is that, that, that external change and internal change are one full circle. And I just had been at it for long enough, you know, 20 years of wandering around the country right. and seeing... You once uh, said that, that there had hardly been a week in the last 20 years in which you hadn't gotten on a plane to go somewhere. Yes, I once counted eight days that I hadn't yeah. got on a plane and that was <laughs> my see, record. That was right. And I kept seeing, you know, wonderful, smart, courageous women who didn't have confidence in themselves, you know, who started every sentence with something like, uh, it's probably only me, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. and so on. Uh, it's and like so, all those people who say, I'm not a feminist, but. <laughs> yes, right, right. And, and sometimes the same people for yeah. the same reason, exactly. you know, without the courage right. to be, right, right. right. Uh, but uh, therefore, I started to go in the bookshops and look for books that I could give them because I believe in bibliotherapy. <laughs> <laughs> books are good for you. <laughs> books are good for you. Okay. Uh, and what <laughs> laugh I laugh and read a book. Uh, well, yeah. they can be kind of portable yeah. friends, right. I think, really. Right. And uh, what I found were a lot of books that were very helpful with external skills and activism and careers and so on or were kind of new age books, you know, with uh, a lot about self-realization, uh, which was very helpful, uh, but neither half worked without the other. I mean, the, the, the new age ones had no politics and the political ones left you burned out because right. it didn't have any. So I started to write it um, and feeling sure, of course, that I was writing it for other people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was and no glory in the book you were writing. There was no me in the book, no. Right. Um, and uh, after about 200 and some pages of that, a friend who is a family therapist read it, and she said, well, I don't know how to tell you this, you know, but... You but know. I've got some bad news. Right. Well, I knew that something was wrong, and I knew I was... Because I was, what, you didn't feel connected to what you were... Yeah, was, I knew I'd sort of... Ri a writer kind of knows when you've lost your right. voice, really. Uh, but I didn't quite know why, you know. I thought I was just going to put the personal stuff in the right. introduction and right. so um, and I should have trusted my, my interest because I think interest is a sign of what you need to learn, you know, and in fact we, we teach what we need to know. Right. So it became a personal journey as well as a, a, a repertorial one, but the, Im the important thing uh, here is that it's, you know, in the world of, of thesis and antithesis, it's mm. hard to be sitting there saying synthesis, synthesis, you know, <laughs> and that's, that's what this is. If, in yeah. the music world it would be a crossover book. You know, <laughs> you said, it's, you've crossed. From, yeah. Well, where have you, you've crossed from where to where. Well, no. What I, I mean, mean is no. that it's saying to people who have right. been activists that they that totally activists as oh, I had been, right. totally externalized, that right. you can't do that without nurturing your self-authority because you get burned out. And it's saying to people who've been into self-realization things entirely mm. that that doesn't work without the activist. Well, side. when you this activist who had hardly given thought to herself and had given herself to the cause, and 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 you, you talk about how really had not taken care of Gloria. Well, well, except that in this case, the cause was me, too. I understand that. And, and it was the women's movement, and I was helping myself by helping the movement. Right, and you have no regrets about any of that in no, terms of the commitment, in terms not. of what the way it's come, and more about that later. But when you went in search of self, what did you find? When you went in search of understanding how, who Gloria was, what did you find? Well, it, it, it doesn't exactly... I, I don't know, I've never had a lot of sympathy with no. the, you know, who, who, who are you kind of thing. Yeah. What happened was that I just came to the end of my ability to continue in a certain kind of way and gradually burned out yeah it, and 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 even i you know yeah, <laughs> had you know. to admit that i was repeating the way i had been treated in childhood in my current life that that uh i had been a kind of neglected child i mean you know was my parents loved me and they did their best you know but i didn't go to school and my mother was an invalid and so on so and you in fact were the parent of and your i parents. was her parent yeah. right so so i had been a neglected child so i continued to neglect myself you know i didn't uh, save money or take care of my health or you know any any number it even of stretched things. to your apartment in new york even i mean you're, yes, you're right, right about that boxes, you, you it, was, did what, it looked right. like a college dorm or something <laughs> right 
Um, and also because I had been a caretaker, and that's the way I thought of myself, I was continuing to be a caretaker. In some mm. ways, I had turned various projects and Ms. Magazine and so on in, yeah. into, into my mother. And I just, I, perhaps most p succinctly, I didn't quite believe that my inner world was as real as the mm. outer world. So I made myself yeah. real by being useful, which I think many, many women especially, but some men too do. You talk about even, I mean, the person, you, there was a lot of, um, what, what we saw, those of us from the outside, or even those of us who knew you um, in varying degrees of acquaintanceship, saw smart, savvy, on top of everything. No, I don't That's think so. That's what we saw. No, but you I'll tell you something. I think that... Oh, no, you're going to... No, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that there's a double standard here, you know, that I think I would have, if I'd been a man, I would have been seen as not very certain. Really? You think, <laughs> yeah. you think if you were a man that we would have seen, other people would have seen yeah. the insecurity or whatever we call it that you felt I think it, it would have been much within. more visible because as it is, uh, you know, it's so unusual for women to be doing certain kinds of things that right. you become like a talking dog, you know, sort of. Yeah. And How so? Well, I mean, there is a double standard. I mean, Marlo Thomas always says that for a man to be called ruthless, he has to take over your country or your job. For a woman to be cal called ruthless, she has only to put you on hold, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the, well, fact, <laughs> the fact that I was doing yeah. something uh, atypical, you know, but I think anybody who, who knew me at all could, could yeah. see the... Any regrets about the book? I mean, would you take out a chapter here, a chapter there? I mean, would you do anything different? No, I'd if you put had to in another chapter. What would it be on? Uh, <laughs> writers always want to put in more. Yeah. No, you I'd put in another chapter which is about the very uh, measurable, distinct, clear, profound political impact of self-esteem uh, on uh, that is uh, the fact that leaders who, who have low self-esteem, who have been often treated badly in childhood, male, and female. That, male and female, but especially male because right. most, right. you know, uh, most and and also, um, the, there is such a thing as gross national self-esteem. That is, you can see with some p countries that they are really quite similar in many ways in terms of natural resources and nature of population and mm -hmm. so on, except for what you can only call self-esteem, a sense of confidence, a sense of purpose that means that they don't uh, have to be aggressive towards others and, or, or violent towards, uh, internally towards one's own people. And the interesting thing now is that there is a very clear tracing of democratic movements in Eastern European countries and the Soviet Union, or what was the Soviet Union, to changes in child rearing. Mm -hmm. um, that is um, an end to swaddling, right, which right, you know, right. bound kids to, the, to board so they, uh, no action mattered. Uh, some diminishing in ritualized kinds of religious child abuse and so on. Um, and you really can see that even if you take the, as the most gross measure of the value attributed to children in a society, the infant mortality rate, you can pretty much correlate the infant mortality rate with the success or lack of it of, of democratic movements. That wait, is wait, that's slow for me. Well, I, don't, I mean, just don't get that. Okay, well, you can trace the infant mortality rate to the success of democratic yes, movements. Yes, because I'm just meaning saying... Meaning that in, in places of most totalitarian regimes, you'll have the highest infant mortality? Yes, right. It, mm -hmm. In other words, it, it, uh, Poland and, and Czechoslovakia have relatively low infant mortality rates. And, and go to Romania and it's... And grow to Romania or, or Yugoslavia, yeah. which has the highest. And you, so, you know, if you're violent towards children, you raise violent people. If you, you treat children badly, you raise people who mm. think they're bad people and who think that they need an all-consuming authority. It's really the, the classic story that Alice Miller has so brilliantly yes. told us as an author talking about, uh, about Germany and the history of Germany. Let me turn to this year's political campaign. I was talking to Senator Gore, and we talked about the notion of the environment being high up on the priority of political issues that ought to be discussed. Are those issues that are most important to feminists, say, uh, are they part of the campaign dialogue that's been going on in this country? I mean, and where ought they be? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, certainly the, the environmental movement has been 90 percent yeah. female. Uh, you know, people saving the neighborhood, saving the trees, saving the you know, it's only when it gets to yeah. have salaries the, you Being know, concerned that concerned about toxic male. waste in right. their neighborhood, right. right. Uh, and and that, that is a very primary concern. And at a kind of deeper level, um, the, the tie between women and nature, which should be no greater than the tie between men and nature, but has been viewed that way, yeah. um, and the withdrawal of, of God 
from women in nature has was historically a way of making it okay to conquer women in nature. Yeah. So these things actually go together, and there's a, a view. The view of the self is also uh, parallels our view of nature. So if we are destructive of self, we feel an emptiness inside. We feel, you know, it is it is for, correlates with our destruction, our willingness to dis, to destroy or to feel we must yeah. conquer nature. I'm sure you must get this. I, tell me whether I won't make the statement that I'm sure, but just tell me as you go around the country, what are people most asking you? What is it that that uh, people are at most curious about as you sample opinion from one end of the country to the other? Um, I mean, well, that's it, interesting. It, there are a lot of smart, suffering <laughs> people out there, and there and uh, you know, my favorite graffiti is Saddam Hussein has a job. <laughs> do you? You know, I mean, you know, yeah, they they right, really yeah. they really understand. He, so he's still in power and. Right, you know, and do you I, have any power I, over your own life? I, I think I think the question is is sort of um, I think there are two questions. One is a are we really alone or not? You know what what happens is that the individual person watches television or reads the newspaper and feels that they're alone because they feel they are made to feel by the media that George Bush represents the country, which is ridiculous. On no issue does he represent the country. So you know there's there's a um, uh, you know, let me just interrupt. You say that because of the the, the people, the public opinion because polls. public opinion polls are at odds and, with and his position. Whether you're talking about what uh, anything, except maybe the well, 55 sure, mile sure. an hour well, speed limit. I'm, I'm sure we could find something <laughs> right. that practically that Bush anything. represents the but majority it's, you opinion. Know, there's a there's there's a new uh, kind of uh, I don't know what to call it consciousness paradigm, yeah. whatever it is, arising. But there's no national leadership for, or, or not too much national leadership for it. So. So people feel alone, and and what happens most amazingly when I see you know five thousand folks in a lecture hall, is that that suddenly people realize they're not alone. I don't know. I've read this, but this, behind the voters' revolt, America's lost dream. I mean, I'm not sure this is part of what you're talking about, well, but there is some sense the, out there yeah, that America's is, are. I think this is the most sinister form of of of. Um, Obstructionism, which is nostalgia. I'm talking about something that's going forward. Not no, this something, is nostalgia this is for that, the American dream that, some, that somehow never was existed. simplistic and never existed. Never existed. I mean, yeah. you know, certainly I, I wasn't part of it. I can tell you that. And, yeah, and, it did and exist for. But you're saying it never exi you, part of Okay. It, you know. it, it, you're saying it didn't exist for everybody, and therefore it was a hollow dream because and it was also not it was available much too to all materialistic. Americans. And yeah. if you look at the polls now, people are quite willing to to even lower their uh, standard of living, providing that that sacrifice is equally spread if they feel that that is going to save the environment. People are willing to do yeah. this. Is, I'm out of time, but is, is, is the woman's movement at some point of transition now? I mean, is it, is it moving ahead in third gear, fourth gear? I mean, help me understand where it might be in its own well, sort of evolution. I, I think, I mean, you know, these movements by precedent last about a century. Right. And, and we've spent, uh, you know, the first 15 years or so getting a majority consciousness change, which is there in the majority. And now we're in a second stage, which is institutional change. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we have the idea that kids have two parents now, revolutionary idea. I don't know why it took us so long, but but <laughs> yes, we <laughs> but we well, don't we, have we don't yeah. have a shorter work day or a shorter work week. So people so both father and mother can be equal parents. Yeah. I mean, that's one of a thousand examples. But also because we've had a majority consciousness change, we also have a backlash. The yeah. backlash wouldn't be here if we hadn't yeah. been successful. Doesn't mean the backlash won't win. You yeah. know, it depends what we do every day. But we're in this kind of second stage of, you know, it's it's difficult. I mean, you know, our hopes and dreams are raised uh, in the majority. The backlash is pushing against it. Those yeah. and and we're just beginning to make institutional change. There's a lot that hangs in the balance. Heck of a title for a book too. Thank you, Gloria Steinem, Revolution from Within, a book of self-esteem, a real sense of 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 her and her life and changes and and uh, a perspective on one life. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Time Magazine, Corporate Shake-Up, what happened uh, and what does it all mean when we return? Mm -hmm.